Now, uh, no matter uh, whether it's the national security law or the current decision of the uh, National People's Congress, NPC, on improving the electoral systems in Hong Kong or the oath-taking requirement for civil servants, they are all initiatives and important steps that put things on the right track for Hong Kong to implement the one country, two systems principle and to ensure that um, the national unity and territorial integrity as well as the prosperity and stabi stability of Hong Kong could be safeguarded. Now, actually these two main objectives are the whole reasons for adopting one country, two systems principle uh, for 1997 when Hong Kong returns to the motherland. It's set out in the preamble of the basic law. So we have to look at it in this perspective. And the most important reason is that to put things on the right track. Now, um, turning to the point about patriots administering Hong Kong, I think um, this principle applies in every places or jurisdictions. And uh, I can say that in other countries or places, this issue would not be contentious, would be readily accepted by people. And in Hong Kong, it's very unique because we find these principles you know, very contentious, a lot of discussions on that. But come to think about it, um, if you look at the political structure, the civil servants, are the important component of the political structure of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. For everyone playing a role in our political structure of Hong Kong SAR, I think it's, al it's already very trivial. And, 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 and everyone would understand that there must be some requirement. And patriot administering Hong Kong is a basic requirement. Now comes the question about you know, who are the patriots? For one, who respect the Chinese people. Okay. B, accept that um, <coughs> China, the People's Republic of China, um, <coughs> resumption of sovereignty um, of Hong Kong in 1997. And the third criteria is not to do anything that danger or harm the stability and prosperity of Hong Kong. Now, all these uh, these three criteria, I think, is very, very, very obvious and readily accepted by people. This is accepted, but 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 isn't the civil service supposed to be politically neutral? Now, now you you are in a an a political atmosphere in Hong Kong right now, mm. where talk of patriotism, it's very difficult to separate that from politics now. <coughs> now, um, oh, we are in a political city, yes. The issues that we are dealing with, not just for the political appointees, but also for our civil servants, we meet with, you know, a lot of, we come up with, have to deal with a lot of issues that are political, you know? But when, talk about, when we talk about political neutrality of the civil service, what it means is that the civil servants is the cornerstone, is the pillar of the Hong Kong SAR government. And they are playing a very important role in helping formulating government policies, implementing government measures, and do the explanations and serve the public. Now, what political reality actually means is that for the civil service, they have to support, they have to support the chief executive and the government of the day in doing this job. And irrespective of what their personal beliefs would be or their political inclinations would be. But once they are in the civil service, they have to dedicate it to their duties. They have to be loyal to the chief executive and the government of the day and to serve wholeheartedly. Now that means, that is the meaning of political neutrality. It doesn't mean that on, on these issues, you do not take side. Uh, I, I uh, do not support the government, nor do I support the opposition. No, that's not the case. 
you are in the civil service, you are part of the political structure of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. So you have to take a side. You have a role. You have a role to implement, implement the one country, two systems principles in accordance with the basic law and the laws of Hong Kong. And you have to serve the chief executive and the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government. Okay, so by extension of that argument, let me just put to you an example. So anyone right now in the civil service who has a uh, right of abode in the UK, for example, and there, there must be, you must have some calculation or some estimate there. Are those patriots? Uh, and are they, are they uh, uh, towing the line that you now are stating here? Okay, it's clearly stated in the basic law that they have to be permanent residents of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Um, the basic law also provides for those who hold foreign nationalities to remain to serve in the government. So everything we just work in accordance with the basic law and the laws of Hong Kong. At present, there are people who hold foreign nationalities or foreign passports, but so long as they are permanent residents of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, um, they are eligible for serving in the government as civil servants. Do you have an estimate of how many people are I don't have. I don't have, I don't have the... Okay, so, so in that case, if you're saying that's what the, uh, what the policy is, then uh, in terms of their promotion aspects, everything else, they're on par with other people? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be a card-holding patriot here? No, no, there's about? no such a card <laughs> of patriots. What patriots means is that um, you have certain, you have uh, certain uh, um, belief that um, you know uh, everyone would uh, understand is reasonable. For example, including what, including um, the role of the civil service is to support the government, support the chief executive in the implementation of one country, two systems principle. To recognize and accept that Hong Kong is an inalienable part of the People's Republic of China. If you are just a citizen, you are not part of the political structure. Of course, you have all your freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, or you know, uh, everything, in accordance with the basic law and the laws of Hong Kong. But if you have this role as a civil servant, as part of the political structure of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, then you have to bear some responsibilities you have to bear some duty that you have to accept, you have to respect, you have to uphold, you have to protect the various par parameters that I have just mentioned. I get the focus on one country, and uh, that's the overriding factor here, that this is one country. That's the, the basis, the yeah. yes. But, but there is also two systems. Yes. Hong Kong has its unique system, exactly. and it's proud of it. Yeah. At the rate we're going here, I mean, it, it almost looks like some purge is, is happening. Uh, isn't there a danger that we're going to... Uh, just nullify two systems at the end of the day because no, of no. such a focus on one system, uh, one country. Yeah, I back to your early questions about uh, you know the promotion system, for example. Um, the Hong Kong Civil Service has our own systems, which is different from the mainland uh, in terms of our recruitment, career development, promotion, or even our enumeration. Right, entirely different from the mainland. Now we have our own system. That's one country, two systems. But we are part of the, uh, the uh, governing structures of the whole country as well. Now, so that means that uh, we, so, so we, we have put in place a promotion system and mechanism that we will look at uh, one's uh, performance, um, potential, uh, character, experience, etc., etc., and then to decide on um, um, their career development and promotion. Now, the oath taking or the requirement to sign a declaration uh, is something that uh, we want to uh, put emphasis and for everyone to acknowledge, to accept that from the very first day that they join the civil service, they have this responsibility and duty. Now, back to your question about one country, two systems. If we uh, overlook that the one country is the basis, and if there are circumstances of people advocating independence of Hong Kong, or doing acts or you know, uh, activities that uh, would harm or damage the national security, the national interests, then that, that would call into serious questions. So we, we, we just want to put things on the right track, 
and let everybody know that one country is the basis. If we get this one country concept and principle right, then you have a bigger room uh, to develop the two systems and to, to really um, let Hong Kong's advantages shine.